Hey everybody. Today we're using R to do some calculations in the log normal distribution. The log normal distribution is used to model data for which the logarithm is normally distributed. And that means that all the observations are always positive and they differ by several orders of magnitude overall. Some examples would include household incomes and lengths of YouTube comments. I have a whole video on the log normal distribution itself. I'll throw a link to that up top if you want to get a little bit more background before diving in with R. For now, all I'll say is that a log normal distribution is completely determined by two parameters, mu and sigma. Those are the mean and standard deviation, respectively, of the corresponding normal distribution. It's important to remember that these are not the mean and standard deviation of the log normal distribution itself. There are four basic functions in R for calculating in the log normal distribution. The first is RL norm, and that's used to generate random values. You need three parameters here. First, the number of random values that you want, then the mean of the corresponding normal distribution, and then the standard deviation of the corresponding normal. So here's some code generating 12 random values from the log normal distribution with parameters mu 6.1 and standard deviation 1.0. PL norm is your cumulative distribution function. It's going to return the probability that a randomly drawn value is less than or equal to the specified number Q. Again, you have to specify your mu and your sigma just as before. Now, as usual in R, you can specify Q as a vector, so you can compute several probabilities at once. So here's some code that's going to compute probability that x is less than 200, 400, 800, and 1600 in a distribution whose logarithm is normal with mean 6.1 and standard deviation 1.0. The inverse p norm, or pl norm, is ql norm. That's going to return the quantity q such that pl norm of q with the corresponding parameters is p. So again, it's the inverse CDF of the specified log normal distribution. And just like with PL norm, with QL norm, the value you put in, P in this case, can be a vector. So here's some code to compute the 10th, 30th, 50th, 70th, and 90th percentiles in that same log normal distribution. Finally is DL norm, and this is your probability density function for the specified log normal distribution. This one is less useful generally when you're doing um, applied stuff. It's mostly used for theoretical calculations. The thing that you might finding it, find yourself wanting it for if you're using R is for graphing. And so here's some code that generates the, um, the density curve for that same log normal distribution that we've been looking at throughout these slides. All right, I want to swap over to R. I want to do some actual problems. I want to tackle three of them that are going to hit some of the, uh, the main functions that we just talked about. In each of these cases, I'm looking at a situation where we have a log normal distribution with those same parameters we've already been using. Here, representing freshman, undergraduate enrollments at US colleges. Problem one, what's the probability that a randomly selected college enrolls between 500 and 1,000 freshmen per year, or in the year this data was collected. Here I've got some parameters, and I want to get a probability back, so this is going to be a PL norm question. All right, let's swap over to R. Okay, so um, when I want to get the probability that a randomly selected value is in between two values, I need to take a difference between my CDFs. So it's going to be the PL norm of the bigger value, which in this case was 1,000, with the specified parameters. I think they were 6.1 and 1.0. Double check that. Yep. And then I'm going to want to subtract off the PL norm of the smaller value. So that was 500. And I get a probability of a little more than 24%. Just put in a note here that this is for problem one. Oops. And I'm about to do problem two, so I'll go ahead and put in that comment now. Problem two. What's the 99th percentile for US college enrollment? This is going to be a QL norm problem. In this case, instead of being given values and being asked to find a probability, we're given a probability, in this case in the form of a percentile, and asked to find a value. 
So QL norm. In this case, the value we're going to plug in is going to be 0.99. So QL norm, oops, 0.99. And then as before, I have to put in my two parameters, 6.1 and 1.0. So in this case, we get a 99th percentile for the freshman enrollment of 4,500 and about 66 undergraduates. Wonderful. Uh, now we're going to put in a note for problem three. Simulate selecting 100 colleges at random. Plot a histogram of freshman enrollments at those colleges. So I'm generating random values, so this is going to be an RL norm. I want 100 values from the same distribution with a mean of 6.1 and a standard deviation of 1.0 for the corresponding normal distribution. Uh, let's save this as, uh, how about fresh? Like fresh, freshman, first years? All right, and uh, I don't know. Let's just go ahead and print that out so you can just see that we got a bunch of numbers that look like they might be freshman college enrollment numbers. That makes sense. All right, now I want to get a quick histogram here. Um, I think I'm just going to do it with qplot. I know this function has been deprecated. This is really, I think, for me, the big use case for, um, for qplot. And, and for this one reason and this one reason only, I kind of wish it hadn't been deprecated. So there's my warning. Oh, I got to load up tidyverse, don't I? Ha ha. I'll put that right up at the top. Really, I just need ggplot too, but out of habit, I'll do all of tidyverse. And uh, you can see that, um, as I said, qplot was deprecated. I'm going to be upfront about that. I know it. And we'll zoom in on that to take a slightly better look at the 100 values that I got. There they are. You can see that it's got that strong right skew. The values that we have here are differing by several orders of magnitude. They are all positive. It certainly stands to reason that this comes from a log normal distribution. Last comment, if we wanted to do this with ggplot, we would want to make a data frame out of this, for instance, using um, data.frame, or perhaps we would want to do a tibble, um, and then actually use a ggplot on that. Um, that said, qplot has a lot of options here that are useful. So for instance, we can specify a geome with, for instance, geome histogram, if we want to be explicit about that. Here, geome histogram is the one we're using. But I could do other plots as well, like line or point or whatever. All right, so there's some uh, help on using the logarithmic normal distribution in R.